ハレタンザ。ディポポヤダケワトヨソサチピチャシエディ。ダチケ。エ。オンドシュゴレティネザダラミナチュディレ。ダディンガンズケラムチュバ。ラムチュバ。チュピラムチュピケダ。トネ。
habitual ways of, of, um, of thinking, as well as to newly develop qualities. We need to be open and receptive to the, the guidance from our teacher. And to do that, one recalls his kindness and the, the wide array of qualities that he has developed. And it's through, through that process of recalling his qualities and kindness that we appreciate him and the opportunity that we have. And this makes us, to recept, uh, make, makes us receptive to receive his teachings and guidance and, crucially, to apply ourselves to developing wholesome ways of thinking and eradicating deep-seated, unwholesome ways of thinking. Because to bring that about requires joyous perseverance, a delight in receiving and implementing these ways of thinking. And that is how lasting change is brought. <laughs> Chigres, Lamana, Yem Sanyum, Oyer Meres, and no more Yermigitone, and Dustin and Azuki, Sotip Shuata, Dustin, Devacha, Dustangu, Rejerwa, the name that Anazuki Singimaina, Chisa, Mazu Lama Sadi, and the Chigi, ah, Chinganazuki, the Tribal Lamasona, the Rikata, Rikasore, Nata, Rixumna, Rikilas, or Tribachas, and Lama, Chigi Tribare, such a Lamy Tribare, such Dustin War. Do from the outset of this text, one views one's Lama as indivisible in essence from all the Yidams and Buddhas. And here in this section, too, especially in the verse we looked at last week, verse 51, we see our Lama as indivisible in essence from all the Buddhas, whether um, the Buddhas are classified in terms of the hundred uh, lineages or hundred families, or um, condensed into that of five or three or one. We recognize that in essence, our Lama is indivisible, indistinguishable in essence, from the Buddhas. And a, a Buddha is a being that has perfectly developed all their qualities, or rather, they have developed all good qualities to the level of perfection. And all trace of fault has been completely eradicated from their mind. So having a mind that is perfected, they are able to help beings perfectly in accordance with their own individual karmic backgrounds and spiritual, spiritual dispositions. So through the qualities that the Buddhas possess, the qualities of love and kindness, qualities of wisdom and the qualities of enlightened activities, Buddhas can perfectly help beings precisely in accordance with where they are on their spiritual journey. And here, recognizing how our Lama is indivisible from the qualities of the Buddha and is visible in essence from the Buddha, we recognize that he too has those self-same qualities of all uh, good qualities developed to perfection and all faults completely eradicated and thereby can benefit beings precisely in accordance with their own individual personalities. <laughs> Then <laughs> Then 
Hearing the statement that a Buddha has completely perfected their mind, all good qualities have been developed to the point of perfection and all faults eradicated, and therefore the Buddha has perfect qualities of loving kindness, wisdom, enlightenment activities, and fourthly, power. So when he hears this statement, but it's thinking about it, doubts may well arise. Because on one hand, there is this, a mere statement. The other hand, we have our lived experience. And we know that the world is filled of beings who are suffering. Suffering that is overt and easily recognizable as well as suffering that is more hidden, whether physical or mental. And then when you look around us, we see so many beings having to work so hard to try and make their life a little easier. But when we look around, whilst we see an abundance of beings suffering, where are the Buddhas? Where are all these limitless Buddhas? So doubts like this may well arise. <laughs> Tinema when one thinks, certainly one should, uh, you could say almost should give rise to the doubt. So where are all these Buddhas? Why do I have to work so hard to, to feed myself and my family, to clothe my children, to, to pay for our home to live in? Why do, do myself and all others need to work so hard in this way? When the Buddhas, it is said, they are perfected beings. And they have such power and ability, and they, they have love for all beings and incredible wisdom. So where is my help? Where is my assistance? Why am I having to do it all myself? And it's so hard. Where are these Buddhas when I need them? Then <laughs> Tumodon, 
It's fair to say that to have such doubts is good to, to, to give rise to, especially where it serves one to think deeply about the topic. So we have, we've heard many times that all the, the happiness that we experience and the lasting stable happiness that we long for, this doesn't come about causelessly, but independence on causes. So too do all the problems and difficulties that we experience. These two come about independence on causes. A Buddha has also attained the perfected state through the accumulation of vast stores of, of causes, and they have resulted in the attainment of Buddhahood. So from the side of the Buddha, there is no further work to be done. They have achieved the perfected state, and they are ready to help us in any and every way possible the only limitation that is applied to the help that can be given is actually from the side of the, the non-enlightened being, because the obstacle is in terms of being receptive. The obstacle is not in terms of the ability to give. The obstacle lies with the non-perfected being, the unenlightened being, who has limitations to their receptiveness. We can understand this in, in our everyday life, where um, there are a number of new technologies which have, can bring great benefit. And if there was a particular machine that would really help one in one's life, and it was before one, but one had no idea what this is, it's not going to benefit one. Or if one knows what it is, but can't really be bothered to read the manual, it's not going to help you. Or if one reads the manual, but doesn't follow it and then use the machine in the correct way, it still will not help one. So this we can understand then, that both sides of the equation have to come together. Just like for a bird to fly, it has to use it its wings. Merely having them is insufficient. They need to be used. So whilst the Buddhas surround us with wisdom, loving compassion and power, wanting to help us through their enlightened activities, from our side, we need to develop our receptiveness. And the Buddhas appear to us in, the, in many forms, most beneficial of which is the spiritual teacher. So when one has met a teacher, one then has possibility. But for that teacher to be able to have a transformative impact on oneself, one needs to recognize their great qualities and their tremendous kindness. Then one becomes receptive to their guidance and has the strength of mind to apply that guidance to one's own mind and challenge deep-rooted habitual tendencies. ปูสลลบจองเจเกยาซิมชูชูยีจิงเกจูยอบะยีนาตะเกยินเดเลยาปูดิเซนดุกยาปะชายากีนุบะเชมาลับยากีเนซินดุยาปะชาตุยากีเ
ディジャンヨギドンバドンヨギドンバシュクチェンボヨバナデネエ、ゲンディラロマティケチャンジェンデネロマティアチェンリケバチャギロワオペディナシレチェサダゲンディラロビヤギケバチナズュエトゥユニ
to innumerable good qualities within themselves. The Dharma student, who opens themselves up as a receptive vessel to their teacher, does so through recognizing their great kindness and their many qualities. And as part of that process, they'll understand the causal sequence the teacher went through to develop those qualities and to act in a way that brings such benefit or is so kind. And by opening themselves up, they will go, uh, the student will be developing those same causes through hearing the teachings and applying them to their mind repeatedly over a sustained period. And in this way, those qualities that they observe in their, their teacher and they aspire to develop themselves, they will develop them themselves. And the crucial link here is the, teacher, the students opening themselves up to the teacher. And in this way, the self-same qualities that they recognize and continue to recognize in the Lama, they create the causes for those qualities to blossom within them too. Now we turn to the 52nd verse. So when I re read it out, I'm just going to change one word in the first line. And also just to say when Gunnar's commentary comes, the English and the Tibetan is quite mixed. Unobscured, inseparable from the play of innate bliss, pervading everything in motion and at rest, the nature of all things, free from beginning or end, all good, actual, ultimate body cheetah, I make requests to you. The first word, unobstructed, or often um, uh, translated as uh, stainless or faultless, this refers to the complete eradication of all obscurations or stains both the obscurations to liberation as well as obscurations to, uh, to omniscience have been completely eradicated. The next expression, and again this is where I've changed the one term, from the play of innate bliss. The translation simultaneous is fine, but not in this context, because here it refers to the innate mind, the subtlest level of mind. In some contexts, the term uh, simultaneous uh, works better, but here uh, innate is better, the mind that is innate to all beings. This is the subtlest mind that we all have on our continuum, but for us, it's not manifest, and, and that then um, play, uh, points to the, the, the term play, which shows activity. So for us, this innate mind is not engaging in activity or in play. And then the term that we have here is, uh, uh, is bliss or is um, uh, joy. So this bliss or joy arises from the wisdom directly realizing emptiness in meditative equipoints. And the consciousness that is that wisdom directly uh, med uh, realizing emptiness, meditative equipoise, is this innate wisdom. 
this innate mind, the subtlest of minds. Ah, na dene, dene in zada lanje new me sem lanje sem lanje digi ane dian devi kawa kawi ngo dewa dewa digi na tomba ni tobi tomba ni tobi lo. Zechudanyambashibe Again, then, this expression from the play of innate bliss refers to the innate awareness which is the wisdom directly realizing emptiness in meditative equipoise. Then the next term we have is inseparable, or more commonly translated as indivisible. And here, this refers to, to this innate awareness that is directly realizing emptiness, the object and itself, the object possessor or that wisdom, are inseparable, indivisible. Just like if we pour water into water, these two, perhaps, glasses of water that are poured into a single a vessel, their, those, their water is at one source, another source, are indivisible, inseparable. So too, the, the object of emptiness, as well as the uh, wisdom directly realizing it, are indivisible, inseparable. <laughs> Tamas <laughs> ตาทารบาดะทําจิกิมโกวาเทยาซาวะเดเลตินดุสจินะทารบาดะทําจิกิเจซาโควาโลโคเกซาวะเอนเดเลตินยุงโกเรเอทารบาดะทําจิกิ
这是一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很好的一个很
And as the, the body and the consciousnesses develop within, within the womb, the body starts to take on the various stages of development that we'll be familiar with. So too, with the development of the coarser minds, building upon the subtlest mind. So I would imagine that within the womb, especially when the, the infant is very young, the fetus is very young, coarse minds such as the afflictions, such as anger and pride, I would imagine, are not arising. But later, as development arises, those coarser minds too will become a, a manifest and will arise, just like the body grows and develops too. So there's this process from conception through the development in the womb and then into birth that continues. And likewise, with birth, there will be con the, uh, following birth, there will also be a continuing development of coarser consciousnesses and perhaps a a wider array, a subtler array, or a more dispersed level of afflictions will also develop as the, the infant grows. And then, some point later, this is the process of nirvana, and then we could see the process of samsara, uh, sorry, the process of samsara, and then the process of samsara, of, uh, the process of the opposite, nirvana, would come through hearing the dharma, Imprints arising, aspiration, so imprints ripening, aspiration arising, and then applying oneself to those teachings, developing virtuous minds within oneself, minds such as love and compassion, the perfections, including wisdom. So in this way, the root of both samsara and nirvana is this innate mind and its wind energy. だ and yeah, in our context, we also recognize that, in essence, our Lama is indivisible from the Buddhas. So therefore, his, his wisdom and the exalted wisdom of the Buddha, this too is indivisible. Furthermore, further understanding here is that, as I mentioned earlier, that the, the, um, one of the meanings of, of inseparable is that to the wisdom that is directly realizing emptiness, the, that consciousness, as well as the emptiness it's realizing, the object, these are indivisible. So for, for those who have 
directly realize emptiness, these great bodhisattvas, Arya bodhisattvas, for them, only when they are in meditative equipoise, directly realizing emptiness, does emptiness appear, and also only emptiness appears. No conventional phenomena, only the alternate phenomenon, which is emptiness, appears. But no conventional phenomena appear. The only being for whom conventional phenomena as well as the ultimate phenomenon of emptiness appear as being inseparable or indivisible, so now another meaning to this word uh, inseparable, is to the enlightened consciousness. To the enlightened consciousness at all times, all phenomena appear, both conventional phenomena as well as emptiness, the ultimate truth. So that then is a, a further meaning of inseparable. And and so here, for the enlightened consciousness to whom the two truths appear, they appear inseparable and simultaneously to this innate wisdom. And this is where the term simultaneous is a, is a suitable translation as opposed to innate. The, simultane, uh, the play of simultaneous bliss, simultaneously to this wisdom, the two truths appear. So that is the context in which simultaneous is a uh, more suitable translation. In other contexts, innate is a more suitable translation. Whilst the, this innate awareness is the root from which the innate awareness together with wind energy is the root from which both samsara and nirvana arise. For the Buddha though, from the innate awareness of, or the simultaneous bliss, the innate awareness of the Buddha, samsara does not arise because no coarser consciousnesses arise for the Buddha. Rather, the Buddha operates from this innate awareness. From this innate awareness, all the emanations of the Buddha will arise, both in animate and inanimate forms, to benefit beings, whether needing to appear as a bridge, a road, a tree, or as a, a sentient, as a being, such as a human or a god, in order to benefit, the Buddha's innate wisdom will naturally, naturally spontaneously arise in the perfect form to benefit beings. <laughs> Kunji 
Chasan the cap jugan, he said he cap jugares, Chasan digi, tapore, said, Zaywe, Junse, delet in the young gores, said, Chasan Tompany to the delet in the young gores. Chasan Tompany, the Jing and Jokers and Tompany to the Lord Sage, the Yambas in Hangi, Tompany also to be she, delet in a carrium gores in them, and it to Banda Soba Tumba, Tumbana. You say to the Yambachi be dingies in La Sobana, and the men begin you shan, and the Jacunzu be che, Gang Tamje. Topic, topic, you are said, you'll come, drummer, top, you are said, the nigger, top, you law, not so yet, and she'll let you so yet, the nigger, chicky shangy, you and the chick top, not so yet, the chassa, get carriage in the young world, and she tomba you also to be, Langi, tomba you also be, she delat in the young world, yes, Chasa, Langi, Tavia, don't you also be, she did, Tizu Chasa, a captain, Chasa, a cat, Nimala Marshall, Chasa, captain, captain, did Chasa get dark war, yes, dark war, said. Chasan digi delet in the Yungore, Chasan de Lodig, Chasan duo de Dina and Timdu Gore, said he to the world, Chasan denigit, and Chapta said. Chasan da Dandala Chasan, Jedishi Banaji, Dena, Dembe, Yuko, Juba, Naso Badang, and the Chigi, Yu, Shijata, Mara Kemba Chasan, the part so delet in a shagum, Chasan delet in Yungore, Dires or Jungund, that's all Dires. Then, then, but say you are saying you do not do what you are going to be doing. Just as when you are going to do what you are going to do, you do not do what you are going to be doing. Just as you are saying you do not do what you are going to do, then you are doing what you are going to do. Same as when you are going to do what you are going to do. Sometimes the same yours, same teacher name, same your your good, your your mother, teacher the near or real good, what she near to the same teacher the near or real, same your lady, same the Shandaji, when they come by the same day, they'll teach you money, but they come by the same day, same day yours, you are. What in each other, the name Punja, the near sometimes, same day yours, because you are denashing that you are said. Tombani the teacher the Yamba Shahi being Anne, Gunzubi Chu, Kobi, Chet, and Simja and Tamji Dele Chet in the Chasan Toya, the Gunzubi Chasan Toya, and do store to war, as a yos, a dish word. Chasan Dizu Chasan, Sawa Carreras, and Tombani to be teacher in Tangi Divishi, Yishi Dele, Digi Yungo, Dele de Yungo, as a day. The ten said it, Timba said it, teacher the Yamba should be thinking the Yoruba. You let the children yamba shaba yungure, same damara do yungure, that's just a delta yungure. Okay, sorry, I needed just to get it clear. So moving then to the second and third line. Unobscured, inseparable from the play of simultaneous bliss, pervading everything in motion and at rest, the nature of all things. So here, one is referring to this innate this innate mind, which is directly realizing emptiness. So, to such a, a, a mind in the continuum of a Buddha, the two truths appear. All phenomena, whether those of the conventional or the ultimate, appear. Moreover, emanations are what flows from this innate, subtle mind. Emanations benefiting beings primarily through teaching the Dharma, but in all ways possible, benefiting beings. And this, this, uh, this um, exalted wisdom of the, of the Buddha, this mind of simultaneous bliss, this pervades all things, both in motion and at rest. Being secure so to understand these two terms, emotion and, and at rest, we, it is, it's, a, it's a play on words in that at rest um, can be translated as being as being stable. So when one <coughs> realizes emptiness directly, one is very stable on that object. Emptiness, one is not m in motion or moving, wavering. The other word, yeah, we have motion, moving or wavering to other objects. One is at, at rest or stably on that object. Then the term in motion, we would um, understand again through the development of calm abiding as, a as an obstacle, a distraction. One's in meditation and is, is drawn to objects of attachment, say family or other objects. 
Here, the meaning of these two is that all objects, the ultimate truth, so here we have at rest, what the exalted wisdom would, um, of an Arya Bodhisattva would be resting on stably, as well as all other conventional phenomena, love, compassion, and so forth. So that is what's meant by in motion. So the word for emotion literally is, is to, to move or to waver, and the word for at rest is stable. So this then refers to that this consciousness is the nature of all things, or more literally, is the owner or possessor, or the owner of all things. And this shows how the con this innate consciousness, the simultaneous bliss, is the nature of all things, the owner of everything, whether at motion or at rest. It pervades everything. Uh <laughs> Zaranshin Continuing with the, th the third and into the fourth line, again discussing the qualities of the, this innate awareness. It's free from beginning or end. It was, meaning it wasn't brought into existence and will cease. It ha is beginningless and endless. It is the innate mind together with its wind is never exhausted. And then the term all good. So the translation is, is fine. This particular word good gets translated in any number of ways. So one can be kind hearted, one can be good natured. It's a very broad term. Here, what it means, so first the term all, will ref we can understand to completely and at all times, and good we understand as being free of faults. So this mind is at all times, from beginningless time and, and forevermore, in that it is endless, it is naturally free of all faults. And then that is the meaning of all good. At all times, it is completely free, naturally so, of all faults. Rashin 
Then This verse has been describing the innate mind. And as I mentioned earlier in, in, in the class, this is something that all sentient beings possess. It's largely describing here that of a Buddha, but all bodhisattvas, Arya and ordinary, possess this innate mind. All human beings, ourselves, those we are close to and those we dislike, as well as all other beings too, possess this innate mind. Therefore, all beings possess this innate mind from which, to, this innate mind together with its wind energy, from which their own samsara arises, but so too will their nirvana be attained. This is the case for all beings, for us and everyone else, those that we are emotionally connected to and those we are emotionally distant from. This is the case for all of us, that all of, for all of us, we possess this big mind that since beginningless time has been all good, free of faults, and will remain free of faults because it is never exhausted. So the good qualities that we are hearing here about the innate mind, we each possess. For us though, this innate mind is greatly obscured by the coarser mind. But through engaging in the process of purification and the accompanying process of accumulating wholesome minds, these obscurations, these stains, are removed and eventually will be completely eradicated, leaving this innate mind to shine through and arise as the four bodies of a Buddha. So the exalted wisdom of a Buddha is, in essence, no different from our own innate mind. And this is why all sentient beings, ourselves and all others, have Buddha potential, or Buddha nature, or, we, or the other expression, we are of the Buddha lineage, we are of the same family as the Buddha. Uh, that and the Tomani and Rashin and Magoba. And it that Dunamji, Janju Simu Kiala Sova, the FCD, Dunam, Dunam Janju Sims, the Tombani was on the Tobin, Yamshe, Yishe, Mue, Kiala, and the Sova Tips said, on the Sin Janju Simu Kiala Sova Tips. The <laughs> Delatine <laughs> The verse ends with making, once again, like in the preceding verses, supplications or requests to our Lama. 
We do so having reflected on all these good qualities that this innate, uh, innate uh, uh, mind that is indivisible from uh, that of the Buddhas, that is um, directly realizing emptiness, and from which the manifestations of, of, of bodhicitta, in these, all the manifestations of the Lama and the Buddha, uh, benefiting beings, these manifestations of bodhicitta arise. This mind that pervades, pervades all objects, both conventional and ultimate, those both in motion and at rest, this mind that is the nature of all things from which the, uh, our own samsaras arise as well as, as the, our future nirvanas arise. This mind that is without beginning or end and is all good in that it's completely eradicated from all faults. This actual mind, this ultimate body, chitta, is what you, rec- what, what you possess and therefore I make supplications to you. And I think that the Mongo Chiyosu are Binya Furthermore, this verse has recognized large number of incredible qualities within our Lama. His innate wisdom is unobscured. All the obscurations, liberation and, and enlightenment have been eradicated. His innate wisdom is inseparable with that of all the Buddhas. His wisdom is inseparable from the object that is being realized to be uh, that, that, that of, of emptiness. His innate wisdom pervades all phenomena, both true, uh, truths, those in motion, so conventional truths, those at rest, the ultimate truth, and is the very nature of all things in that from this innate wisdom, samsara and nirvana arises. And it is without beginning and will never cease. It's all good being, it's completely stainless. It is the manifestation. And then from this, uh, from uh, the, this, this um, innate mind, the play or the manifestations of bodhicitta, benefiting beings, arise. So all these incredible qualities within our Lama are to be found on his innate mind or within his this innate awareness. Is that Naranju Lama Chiri Kala, then Naranju Lama Chiri Lama de Naranju Dorochi, Pene Chiki Sheri Duji Pumborochi, Naranju Dorochi Chigur, what Naranju Naya Tayova Naja, Lama and Nagu Yoba Tayu Yoba, Lama Kalasa, whatever the Shela, Durokongova, Chasang Naranju Dini Chigurva. Naranju Diniji, Nangore. With this reflection, we recognize ever more clearly that whilst, on the one hand, our Lama appears to us in a form that we can relate to, so a body that is similar to ours, having needs similar to ours, to, to eat, to sleep, to clothe, or for clothing, and so forth. We recognize that this is just an aspect that is displayed to benefit beings such as ourselves. That's all it is. This is a, a play, a manifestation, a display, nothing more. In essence, is the mind of ultimate body cheetah, the innate subtle mind that is indivisible from all the Buddhas. That is who the Lama truly is. What appears to us is a mere display, 
but his essence is that of all the Buddhas. Sashi the Lama Chopa began. We went through a wide number of meditations, <laughs> in, in, primarily reflecting on, on emptiness and arising as, as the deity, visualizing this vast pure land before us. And Genla went through the whole thing from verse 9. Um, I can't hold that in, in mind. But Genla went through the whole thing from verse 9, talking about how one visualizes the, the central figure of one, one's Lama, recognizing that he's in nature inseparable from one's uh, Yidam, as well as all the Buddhas, sitting upon a sun and a moon di disc, which is itself upon a, a lotus, surrounding the various uh, levels of deities and the various uh, lineages of, of great beings. So again, I went through all of this. And then in summary, all that has arisen before one, we recognize, is a manifestation, a display arising from our lamas' innate wisdom. The same innate wisdom or the simultaneous bliss that arises, uh, that is referred to in this, in this verse, it's from that innate mind, which is, in essence, that of all the Buddhas, that these, these displays, these manifestations arise. Lamikuzuntu
This then concludes the section running from verses 43 to 52, which is where one recalls the vast qualities of one's Lama as well as, as his unsurpassed kindness. One does so to make one open and receptive to his care and guidance. And as one generates these varying um, uh, uh, different aspects of his qualities, one makes supplications or requests for his inspiration and guidance, in particular, to be cared for and guided until enlightenment is attained. So that then is in brief the meaning that has been looked at in the section. And so then Next week, then, we'll come to the 53rd verse, which is the culmination of these, this group of 10 that we've just looked at. We can hear... It, one comes to a, a point where with having recognized the urgency of a situation, one makes heartfelt plea for, for blessing, for transformation. So just like in other aspects of life, when one not- recognizes the urgency of a situation and that someone can help one in this time of dire need, one will put one's hands together and beg, please, I need you now. And that is what is expressed in the 53rd verse, and it's the culmination of these ten. Thereafter, the Lama responds in two ways. The first is then expressed in 50, verse 54, where he bestows um, his blessings through um, in various ways, including the, um, the, the bestowing of the four empowerments. Thereafter comes the actual bestowal of the Lama's blessings, which have been supplicated from verse 43 to 52, culminating in 53. Then the Lama presents the actual method by which the student can transform their mind. Remembering last week I spoke about the meaning of of the word uh, blessing, which is the Lama has the power to transform as long or to the extent that the, the student who is to be transformed receives and applies the teachings. And that then is presented, the actual blessing on how to transform oneself from verse 84, which is the uh, graduated uh, uh, stages of training in how to transform oneself. So that's stepping ahead a little bit. Next week we'll come to verse 53 with the particular requests. Okay, then thank you very much. Thank you very much.